Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. So I was able to get a Microsoft Surface Duo into the studio. This isn't a retail unit. It's not like a fully functioning one that you'd purchase in September. It's an engineering sample that has some limitations, but I wanted to do a discussion on the kind of hardware on it, like the physical hardware, not the actual internal components, but the, the feel and the vibe that I'm getting from this device. So I've had this for a few days and I sat on it for a little bit before I made this video because this is a novel device. I've used other foldables before, but this is a completely different type of form factor and a different, it's just a completely different type of machine. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get into that. But before I talk about this thing, I kinda wanna talk about the other kinds of foldables. And in my opinion, there are three main kinds of foldable devices. I mean, that's up for debate. Obviously, you know, you can probably categorize these things differently. But the first type of foldable to me is something like this, the Galaxy Fold, this is the first generation. And I would peg the Huawei Mate X into the same kind of category. Obviously those flip differently, like they actuate in a reverse manner, but the idea is the same in the sense that when it's open, it's a large screen, almost tablet-like experience, but then it folds up to something that's a little more manageable. Not super small, but a more compact device that you can put into your pocket. But the idea being when it's open, it's a big screen, right? Okay, that's type one, in my opinion. Type two is a smaller device, so when it's fully open, this is the Z Flip, or Z Flip in non-Canadian language. Uh, the Z Flip is a device from Samsung that when it's open looks like a regular phone, I guess, but it folds up to something that is more compact. In this case, it's a square device, but the usage between these two devices, despite having very similar screen technologies, like they both flip open and they both have screens that actually fold on the inside, the screens are so different that you can see where the usage would differ, right? This is gonna be way better for media consumption. You're just getting a really large screen experience. And this is just like a regular phone that is becoming more compact when you fold it up. Now, there is technically a, another type, like I, on Twitter people are talking about this, but this is the Velvet from LG. So this device, it's got a screen that's like an optional accessory, right? It's technically a foldable because it does fold and there's two screens, but I don't really consider this in the same kind of category because this is an optional accessory. You can tell from the hardware and the software that it's more of like a bonus, right? Plenty of people are gonna be purchasing the Velvet without ever having a secondary screen attached to it and the software shows, which is why I personally wouldn't consider it to be a truly you know, foldable device in my opinion. Okay, now let's get back to this guy. Service Duo. This is a device that was designed with, right? It was designed with that function in mind. It's designed to open up, it's designed to fold and close and be a true foldy boy. This is meant to be exactly that. Now, the first thing I noticed when I got this thing in, I thought that this thing would be made out of metal. I thought just like all the other Surface devices that this was some kind of magnesium clad device. It's actually glass. It looks cool, I just, thought it was magnesium. So if you're like me and you've seen a lot of surface devices expecting this thing to be a magnesium alloy device, it's actually a glass one, a very nice looking one, but it's glass. It's probably a good thing though. Like if this thing was made of magnesium, I feel like the scratches on it would get really bad after a few years, but like any other kind of glass backed or glass based phone, I think this will age relatively nicely. Now, the other thing I noticed is it's super thin, not the whole device, like the whole device is kind of like a regular thickness, but each individual slab is super thin. I looked it up, it's 4.8 millimeters. When you hold it in your hand, especially when it's unfolded, it is weird. I have not held an electronic device that was this thin in a really long time. It feels like a really small booklet. And I gotta be honest, I like how it holds. I like how it fits in a hand and it's just, the ergonomics on this thing are really nice. Now. The other thing I noticed is that it's a very wide device. And I think under normal circumstances, it doesn't feel too wide. Like when I first got it, I gotta be honest, I was like, whoa, this is wider, right? This is wider than any phone I've ever used before. But then when you kind of handle it a bit, it's like, it makes sense. The only time I feel like it might be a bit of an inconvenience is when you're making calls. Like to make a call, you have to flip it so the screens are both on the outsides. And then you hold it up to your head. And now you're holding a device that is really wide for a phone, right? It depends on your usage. If you're on the phone all the time, every day, then you're probably not gonna want to use this, but just putting it out there. I think for phone use, it's gonna feel a little wider in your hand than most other phones. But otherwise, I'd say that the width is likely gonna be a non-issue. So I also wanna talk about build quality. Now, when it comes to build quality with phones, 
usually we're talking about slab phones, right? Phones that are honestly easy to build well in 2020. Even like 200 or $300 smartphones are built well. They usually have, it's not hard to have good build quality in a smartphone nowadays. But when it comes to phones like these, where there's moving parts, this is where good build quality really shines. And I think this is, it's an engineering marvel. I hate to use that term. I feel like an ad at this point, but it is so much better built than I thought it could possibly be. Considering number one, how small these hinges are, but two, it's also the range of motion. This thing has full 360 degree flip and it's super smooth. Like there's no clicks, there's no clacks. There's not even like a, a, a portion of the rotation that's like faster or slower than the rest. It's this ultra consistent movement. That's just really good build quality. The hinge tension feels just right and it feels balanced. Like the left screen and the right screen feel perfectly balanced. I can't weigh them individually, but I feel like they designed this thing in a manner so that you wouldn't ever feel like this thing had any kind of imbalance when you're opening and closing the device. There's one camera and only one camera. It's kind of like a front facing camera used for video conferencing. But if you want to, you can just flip the screen to the back. And then now you have a, you can use like the touchscreen controls to shoot it as a regular camera, right? Just because of the functionality of these two screens. There's also a fingerprint sensor on the side. Uh, it's just right below the power button. And I noticed the SIM card tray doesn't have a rubber gasket. Like I popped it out. There's no kind of even basic water resistance. So I feel like you know, if, if you're someone that goes for dives with their phone, this probably won't be great for that. Now I wanna talk about the main feature of this phone, the, the screen or the screens. So this is 8.1 inches spanned across with each individual panel being 5.6 inches. But the first thing you'll notice right away is that there's a gap, a very noticeable gap when you have this device opened up wide. Now here's my take on this, on the gap, the situation with the gap under very certain circumstances, having the screen split like this can be advantageous. You'll understand in a minute, but for the vast majority of usage and the vast majority of users, this is just, it's, it can range from a minor inconvenience, which you can just kind of ignore to being something that's just downright unpleasant. The first thing is that if you're purchasing this with the intent of media consumption, you're going to watch stuff on a single 5.6 inch panel. You'd have to be some kind of psychopath to want a line right down the middle of your content. It's just, it's not a good look. Uh, and this is without even seeing the device do this, right? This particular device can't, I can't load stuff onto this screen, but you can just tell looking at that gap. But what I think it's really good for, this is gonna be, in my opinion, the first device out there that's gonna be really good at doing lots of stuff on your phone at the same time. All the examples that Microsoft has had in their commercials and their press material, they're showcasing this thing, going through some incredible workflows. And it looks so appealing to me. Like one of the things that I've never loved about foldable phones is that they never really brought anything that I wanted to do with my phone. And this is just from personal experience. Right? And I feel like this kind of goes beyond me. Like if you look at even tech YouTubers, people that have access to this stuff, not a lot of people are using foldables as their main device because it's, it's cool, the tech is awesome, but right now in 2020, it doesn't bring enough to the table to kind of go through the, the negatives of carrying something that's larger and has uh, like some compromises when you go with these devices. But because this thing has the separated screen, and this is the advantage I was talking about earlier, it allows you to, it allows the developers to make apps that are designed in a more tuned manner than something like this. Because apps that are built with the Surface Duo in mind have to take in consideration that gap. And when you do, you just have proper usage of this real estate. Like these panels are wide, right? You can fit so much stuff on these screens. If you do it properly, you get an experience that you just cannot get with these regular foldable phones. But that being said, I don't think this is the end stage, right? I don't think that Microsoft wants to have a seam or a gap right down the middle, but because of the limitations of tech, if they wanna keep a device thin like this, you have to have two separate panels. Otherwise, if you're bending screens and folding screens, you need to make them thick to house that mechanism that actually rolls the screen on the inside. But the thing is, when the technology does come where they can actually have a seamless or a gapless experience, the software, the stuff that I was talking about before, where you can actually move stuff around and take advantage of a screen like this, that still works really nicely with those newly updated screens. So I think this is cool. 
I think this is a great direction for Microsoft to be taking. I think that this will likely be the phone that I switch to. It's super expensive and it's not even available in Canada. I have to go order this thing from the States and get it imported here. But this is one of the first phones this year that's really moved me and thought, and that made me think, this is something I would actually want to use. Like this looks like something that I think a lot of people could make proper use of. But that is the Microsoft Surface Duo. At least like an early look at it. And I guess when I get my real unit in, I'll be doing a proper review in it. But yeah, what do you think? Of the three different kinds, or four if you count the LG Velvet, but of the three kind of main kinds of foldables, what is the one that speaks to you most right now? Like if these things were all the exact same price, you could choose whichever one, which one would you actually get? Imagine you could just turn your phone into a folding phone. Would you want something giant that folds into something smaller, something that is regular size that folds into something more compact? Or would you want something like the Surface Duo where it's meant to be super thin, but provides a different type of user experience? All right, let me know. I'm actually really curious. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.